Welcome to Business the Sector Watch. I am Idoze Fabian. With me is our in-house analyst, Bala Alge. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be looking at um, the fast moving consumer goods sector and we're going to be looking at recent earnings updates in the sector. Bala Alge, you're welcome once again Thank to the show. Much. Yeah, um, looking at the fast moving consumer goods sector, um, most of, some of them have been releasing their, 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 their first quarter earnings. What have you seen so far in looking at some of these results and what has been happening? Can you just give us some updates as well? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, the, early, the early earnings update of um, FMCG firms, that is a uh, fast moving consumer goods uh, firm, showed um, sluggish, sluggish growth. For instance, uh, Flower Mills Nigeria had um, revenue growth of 1.76%, uh, which is quite low. And at the bottom line level, which is the profit, they had a profit dip of 44%. Wow. Um, similarly, um, Dangote Flower Mills, had um, growth in sales, like 27% growth in sales. However, the company recorded loss, and this loss have been, uh, has been losses rather. These losses have been um, recurring you know, for a period of time. Um, again, Guinness, for instance, too, uh, had a um, uh, um, slight um, growth, you know, at, at the top line level, whereas at the bottom line level, which is the profit, had a profit dip. Close to 32 percent profit deep. Oh. Uh, profit deep. You know. So the only the only company, as far as the, uh, uh, the latest earnings update, you know, that fell well was uh, Seven Up. But uh, Seven Up had 8.8 uh, percent rise in revenues, while um, had profit growth of 60 percent. So oh. of the six firms that have just released in the FMCG sector, only Seven Up was able to grow both the top. Uh, Bottom line and bottom line. What factors are uh, causing them to affect the firm that appears in the sector? Yeah, I think the only firm that has uh, that has felt that has felt well you know, is Seven Up. Seven Up have, have, have performed it pairs, you know. Since and the company yeah, Seven Up is, is uh, it is the third consecutive quarter that Seven Up has been having you know rapid growth. Um, one of the reasons for their, you know, um, um, for the rapid growth of Seven Up is uh, one, they 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 are tapping into the Nigerian um, fast growing population. Um, there is this demogra uh, demographic um, 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 growth, you know, a lot of people are, are, are having change of taste. People are taking more soft drinks. A lot of people are going to the restaurant, like the shop right and what have you. You know, pending time, pending uh, management comment from Seven Up, you know, that will enable us to know the better. So the, the challenge is that many of them are undergoing some very serious challenges in the sector. So what, what, are, what are some of these challenges that these consumer firms are facing? And why are they not still able to exploit the large population that like seven of them exploiting? So what, what key challenges are, are prevailing in the sector that are going this company? Right? You now, first of all, we have to look at the uh, cost pressures. You know? Okay, if you look at the cost of sales ratio, you know, which measures the relationship between uh, the cost of production and sales. You know? If I had the Nigerian millers, for instance, that is um, um, flour mills, um, down, you know, flour mills, um, down with the flour mills, and um, northern Nigerian flour mills, they have an average cost of sales ratio of 90%, which means for every one naira these companies generate, they spend 90 copper on input cost. Uh, um, one of the reasons why they have um, uh, why they have cost pressures is um, one um, infrastructure. Infrastructure that we have a lot of bad roads. A lot of these companies are located where you know before they move goods from from, from warehouse or um, from, from warehouse or factory to market. That is on one hand. Then secondly, again the security challenges in the north too. You know, it poses a lot of um, uh, spikes and distribution uh, distribution cost. Oh. Yes, and again, then for the millers, for the Nigerian millers, you know. Um, the, the, the recent 10 percent increase in the price of wheat for the month of December, you know, that will also spike material cost, also raw material cost. You know, coupled with the 8 percent devaluation, you should expect that maybe uh, 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 this will uh, uh, lead to a, a, a rise in uh, production cost. Likewise, Nigerian Guineas to the brewers to you know, that, that they, they can put, over 50 percent of their raw material, so the devaluation of the currency, you know, would affect their uh, cost of production. So, 
and clearly the validation is a very big factor and um, this Naira validation is taking some serious toll on these companies. Can you can you address that um, can you can you give us more explanation as to how the Naira is is affecting more um, of what customer challenges to this comes back? The people can look at how um, how much of them imports and how much of them need need, need that dollar exposure to to which they will be very, very adversely affected. Yeah, you know, uh, basically a lot of the ground firms, you know, uh, especially the manufacturers, uh, the really FMCG firms, import raw materials from uh, from from abroad, you know, like uh, the uh, Nigerian bureaus and uh, the flour millers, you know, as I as I, as I have mentioned, import 50, over fifty percent of their raw material from abroad. It, you know, so the devaluation of Naira, logically, the devaluation of Naira will have impact on their material cost. You know. The valuation of currency makes imports expensive. You understand? Like the bureaus now import sugar, barley, you know, while the, um, the millers import um, wheat. So coupled with the price of wheat at the international level, the price of sugar at the international level, combined with you know the, the valuation of naira. Apart from that, a lot of these firms have um, dollar-denominated debt in their capital structure. For instance, now the total debt of flour mills Nigeria is. Um, one hundred and ninety billion naira. We have like twenty twenty million dollars already loaned there. So, I mean, with the devaluation of the naira, with the rise in naira, the, the devaluation of the naira is expected to affect the the the, 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 the dollar um, denominated loans in their, in, in their capital structure, and this will also increase the finance cost. So, these firms will be paying a lot of um, 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 interest out of operating profits. So, you expect that will be a hit. On the, on, the, on the bottom line. Do, do, do you see any um, turnaround in this FMCG industry? Uh, what, what is your outlook for the sector? Yeah, 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 yeah. Considering, considering the, the, the large market, you know, Nigeria is a large market, basically. Nigeria is a large market. The, the challenges they are facing is, to me, is a short term challenge. They will rebound. You know, as I have mentioned, the, 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 the rising population. Nigeria has one of the you know, largest, um, 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 you, the, the large chunk of the Nigerian population are youth, you know, so yeah, about, about 60% are below the age of 30. So it is clear that this, this young people will consume, they're going to consume bread, they're going to consume soft drinks, they're going to consume you know, liquor, which is alcohol. Then again, the, the, the local content, the government is able to, if we were able to, you know, um, um, intensify all effort on the local content, you know, and having local raw materials developed, you know, will really, really, really help reduce material cost. So that we depend less on imported and um, raw materials. So, as a, in summary, we have a very large market, the, the rising middle, middle income that create for consumption. Um, government boosting the government. Well, government we have boosting the hand, you know, government expenditure. So. Alright, thank you very much for your time on this show. Um, it's been very, very insightful listening to you in the House of Finance for Business Day for the companies. We've come to the end of today's show, today's um, company watch, and um, I've been your host, Dose Ephibia, with me was Bala, the in house company analyst. Thank you very much.